Welcome to your VR devlog number eight. My name is Ryan and we are live on Steam. So you can go to Steam and search for your VR right now. Pick up a copy. It's on sale for $14.99 and come in here and try it out for yourself. But we have a ton of content to get through as it's been two weeks since the last devlog. We've been so busy with the release that I haven't had a chance to do more devlogs. So I'm going to cover a lot in a short period of time, starting with our main menu house. We decided uh, instead of starting you off in the main world, we wanted to give you like a lobby of sorts. The main reason was so that you could choose what kind of game modes um, you went into, starting with our Practice Forge. And I haven't unlocked it in the main game yet, but you can see that there is a forge and a smelter in there with unlimited resources. So you don't have to worry about gathering resources and learning how to forge while you're wasting resources that you gathered. And then our uh, our main open world. And so in the, the rest of those, there's just some scrolls around with some information, motion sickness, uh, patch notes, and some toys to play with. But we are here for the open world. So let's give that a gander and go see what we have. Okay, here we are in our starter house, pretty much the same way as it was before. I've made a little bit of a mess, but what we do have different here is a weapons rack on the wall as well as spawners for tools on the table. So what we wanted to do was make sure that if you lost a crossbow or a pickaxe that you didn't have to go and buy a new one. You could always come back here and retrieve kind of these base weapons. So when an, uh, an object is out in the field somewhere, you've lost it, you'll see a transparent spawner of that uh, that object and then you can just click the trigger here and get it in your hand and it's the same for your quivers and for your bows and your crossbows and speaking of quivers while I have this here that gives me an opportunity just to show off our quiver system so when you bring a quiver close to your body you'll notice that you'll get this sphere around you and this is telling you that you can lock the quiver in place a lot of games will have it so you have to reach behind your head and grab the arrow or you reach at a fixed quiver at your waist. But what we wanted to do was we wanted to let you kind of specify where on your body you wanted this quiver, where it felt comfortable for you. So I mean, even if I wanted to have it back behind my, my head, I could, but I don't find that very comfortable. So you just usually what you want to do is to have it in your waist and you can just grab the quiver and load it into the crossbow as you see fit. Same with the uh, the arrow quiver as well. And when I want to take it off, I just use the side buttons on the controller, pull it out, and I just drop it over there. So again, nothing much else has changed in the starter house. We've got a scroll on the wall with just a bunch of instructions with how to get out uh, into the world and how to use the menu and whatnot. And at the end of that scroll, it, tells me that I got to put a log in the fire so I'm going to go do that and then now we can see that this sphere here went from red to blue which means it is now open and like I said I've got a ton of content to get through here in less than 40 minutes so I'm going to make this quick and just jump around a little bit and go over everything uh, bit by bit and then probably make specific videos on things like the smelter or the blacksmith first thing first though I'm going to turn the music down so that uh, isn't overpowering me and uh, there we go. So we've got our weapon stalls. Now this is something that you're going to have to build in the game and we have a whole kind of building construction system that's at a preliminary phase. But I've just had these already set up for me so I wouldn't have to go through there. And this is where you can just come and buy weapons. So everything now costs gold to buy. You can see that the bow and the crossbow are both two gold. And you get gold from selling ingots and well, selling anything really that you want. So you can see if I look at my menu, I don't have enough gold. So I'm going to have to go and find some and come back and, and buy these later. Our archery range is now a little bit more polished, a lot less of a test environment. And uh, we've got a couple games that I'll also come back and, and show you later as well. Um, a new game that's in place is our horseshoes. So kind of thinking of fun medieval games to play, horseshoes definitely came to mind. So you can just take these and throw it at the pin. I'm not very good myself, but it's throwing horseshoes and it's a hell of a lot of fun. I don't have to probably have to explain that too much. And uh, so like I mentioned before, we have a, a rudimentary building system in place and how it works is you'll have a chest right now, it'll be a box, where you can place resources that are required to build a building. So uh, for this building, it's the, the smelter and that's what we use to refine our iron ore into ingots and it's a 
Pretty simple process here. All I need is one iron ore, one coal, and one stone. In the, in the actual game, I've made those resources a lot higher, so you actually have to work for them. But for the sake of brevity it here, looks like we have all we need no, it's, it. and it's part of Come the tutorial as well, so I'm just going to get away so he's not overpowering my voice. So it's all part of the tutorial system of building these things. So this is Skelly, our handy guy that's going to take you through just some of the preliminary stuff with getting into your. And uh, he's earlier on as part of the other tutorial asked me to gather up these resources to build the smelter. So you put them in the box and you can see that it fills up the requirements and you just go up and you hit the build button and off you go. True work of art, isn't right. And he's you pretty happy about that. Ten pieces of so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over how to use the smelter in another video. But uh, until then, you can see that you've got uh, you got it's a, a custom made asset this is our actually our first custom made kind of building for your and it's uh, it's pretty cool you just take your coal you take your iron and uh, you just put it into the top and then you work the bellows and get the heat get the heat going nice and uh, nice and hot and then it forms a bloom and anyways I'll do a whole video on how to smelt iron and get your ingots uh, let's see what else we got uh, we got our pub over here. So the pub is the, I haven't reduced the cost on this yet because it's, uh, it's one of the coolest buildings in the game. So I want you guys to experience that on your own and unlock that. But uh, on top of a basic, the basic kind of building system where you just put everything in a chest, hit build, you get yourself a building. The next kind of building system that we have in place is more of a tiered building system. So Whereas you have kind of multiple levels that you need to unlock. And with this, just as with the smelter, I've reduced the costs way down so that we don't have to go through that. But you can see as I put a piece of wood in and I hit build, I get the, the building, which is great. But now we can see I have to gather some more resources to build the forge and the bellow. So one wood, one coal, one stone. So let's uh, get stone. Let's get wood. Put it in the box and uh, one coal. And there we go, we've met all of our requirements, we hit build, and now we've got the forge, and so on and so forth. So uh, I'll do another video all on blacksmithing. So what this is going to eventually do is unlock the entire forge complex, and I can eventually blacksmith my own, uh, my own swords. So I'll do a whole video on that later, as that can be a bit of a process. Uh, what else we have? We have the environment itself. We've been doing a lot of work on optimization and uh, playing around with what the kind of the best settings are. You can see I can go into graphics and right now I believe I'm in ultra just so I can give you guys a nice pretty world. But uh, typically on my 1070 right now, I like to keep it at medium and it doesn't have too much of an effect. You can see it, it thinned out the trees a little bit, but to maintain a solid 90 frames a second, medium is where I like to keep it. And uh, if I go down to low, definitely even better. This might be where you, your nine, the 970 users might wanna be. Uh, and you can even go as far as customizing and turning off shadows, for example. And that that does probably the single biggest uh, thing on improving performance is just taking the shadows off because they are such a killer on performance when it comes to open world forest environments. But I like things looking pretty, so I'm going to deal with going to deal with uh, 60, 70 frames a second for now. And uh, let's see what else we have going on over here. So. I uh, know what we have. We have infinity boxes. We can talk about infinity boxes. Okay, so we can see right here we've got a corral with a zero next to it. And what that is, is it's one of our infinity boxes. And actually, I can go over to our smelter and show you how this works in real time. And so, what we wanted was a way that you could gather dozens or hundreds of resources without uh, needing to physically kind of stack them up on top of one another. Uh, and as well as we have a garbage cleanup system, whereas if something's on the ground for a half an hour, it'll just despawn. So what we've created are these infinity boxes or infinity piles. And this is just a simple counter that gets displayed. And I can go on a big uh, you know, resource gathering mission, gather a bunch of my resources, and then just throw it into the pile where it gets uh, added on as a number and not as a physical representation, which lets you store a lot more things in a lot more of an efficient way. Uh, so that's the infinity piles. Uh, we've got buying and selling, uh, uh, selling, uh, selling uh, resources in order to unlock the, the weapons. And uh, you can see right now we still have our basic weapons, our crossbows, our bows, and our hand, uh, hand crossbow. 
and we'll probably do a whole another video on on the final kind of the final iteration of those weapons later. Okay, so we are going to grab our handy hatchet here and go and take a look at this system that has just got put in today and that is hunting. Now, obviously, when we are implementing a, a, a full hunting system as well as PvP, teleportation is going to be severely limited, if not disabled altogether. But for now, uh, we are going to sneak up on these guys. And the hunting system is based around a reputation that the player has based on how many... Uh, deer you have killed. So the more deer I kill, the more scared of me they get. And uh, the quicker they're going to run away and the, the, the uh, yeah, like you can see they're, they're a little bit, that guy's a little, a little bit timid, but this guy maybe not. Oh. Yeah. Ha ha. All right. So I think uh, I kind of hit him a couple times before. So we can see why I can kill animals and eventually I'll be able to do that with my bow and arrow. And come here, come here a little. Quick. Oh. All right, so these aren't normally one-shot kills, but I think I'm getting headshots or neck shots with this axe. So what we have is a dead deer, and just like trees, how these are foliage actors and then I hit them, they become static meshes. Now that this is uh, this deer has been killed, it's no longer an animal. Now it becomes a resource for me to harvest. So I can take my axe right now, and I can just harvest it like I would a tree. And we can see that arrow there I got couple pieces of deer meat which I can then go and eventually cook and uh, harvest and uh, maybe turn into a stew or something like that and it looks like I've got my invisible my invisible wall that I can't I can't throw things through um, so yeah so hunting is in and uh, right now it's only working with melee weapons which makes it incredibly awkward but we will be getting it set up with uh, we will be getting it set up with uh, bows and crossbows here pretty soon. Yeah, so looks like deer are giving me three meat. And uh, the next step, of course, would be to uh, go into cooking and eating and hunger and all the other stuff. But this is the, the very first step in our survival system. So we're pretty excited with it. And, uh, and yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I think we are a cart. I guess that's another system that I haven't shown you guys. So needing to... Uh, gather a bunch of resources and bring it back to your smelter or your, your blacksmithing forge or a building that you want to construct. So the first thing we kind of try to ask ourselves is how, how are we going to allow players to transport large amounts of resources around the map? And part of the problem that we were looking at is that we wanted to maintain the immersion and the realism of the game and it doesn't work with an inventory system that you can just open up and, and look at things. So we wanted things to be done more in a realistic manner that is still convenient. And so introduce the cart. You can just load it up with as much stuff as you want. Just grab the handle and then off you go and haul it behind you. And sure enough, oh, it looks like I lost a piece of wood there. So yeah, haul, haul, haul it wherever you want to go and, and then drop it off. And uh, just to make life a little bit easier with the tools, we have these hooks on the side, and you can just drop your tools in there and then pick them up later. So I think that is the last of the systems that I have to show you guys. Uh, we have hunting, cart, resource gathering. We've got buildings. Uh, we've got our games. We've got our, our smelter and our blacksmith and our pub. Um, we are on early access, as I mentioned. So you can go to Steam. You can search for your VR right now. And get yourself a copy uh, on sale for a couple more days at $14.99. Come and try it out for yourself. Let us know what you think. Uh, at this point, the development of the game is being driven completely by the community. So head over to forums.playyour.com. Vote on what you want to see next. Tell us the ideas that you have that you want to see in the game. And that is 100% what is driving development right now. We got it to early access, but now that's in your hands. And we want to know what you guys want next. So forums.playyour.com for that. Go to www.playyour.com for just a general information about the game or facebook.com slash your VR or hit us up on Twitter at twitter.com slash your underscore VR. My name is Ryan. Leave your comments in the comment section below and thank you so much for, uh, for being with me here today. We'll see you next time.